What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. So it's Monday morning and today I'm going to go place I haven't been in almost six months. I'm going to go to a Goodwill that's about 10 miles away so it's not too far but I usually go to the one that's only like down the street like a mile or two. I'm going to do one store but before we start um, I got a bunch of orders from yesterday. I ship on Friday. I ship on Saturday afternoon. So these are all Sunday orders. Um, I think I got like 12 of them. It was a great day. So I'm going to go through those real quick for pack and ship. I know it's boring to you experienced resellers, but a lot of the newer people like to see what type of packing material, type of boxes, and so forth. So I'll try to make that, you know, condense, but give that information. And later in the video, I am going to give you a book bolo that you will not want to miss. It's going to be worth your while when you're in the thrift store to take a few minutes and look in the business section and nonfiction for this book. If you find it, it's a home run. So thanks for stopping by. Let's get started with the pack and ship. All right, so going out this morning, we have a new era Buffalo Sabres hat. We have a new era Miami Dolphin bucket hat. I have an Olympus digital camera pack. I have a big key telephone, a Wrangler Pearl Snap, Tommy Bahama camp shirt, Callaway driver, a pair of All Saints jeans, a pair of Asics for women, pair of Piccolino's men's shoes, and a Bahamas coffee mug from Starbucks. Packing it all up, um, I'll make it real quick. For my shirts, I always put them in a suffocation bag. Pretty much anything I try to put in plastic. And these will just go into vinyl bags that are 12 by 9. Nice first class weight. When you're doing shipping, always mark your weight and what it is on your package so you don't get confusion. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't know what was what. All right, for the hat, of course, into a plastic bag and an eBay 8x6x4. Some, pretty much most hats will fit in these. Some you need a bigger box. And the hat in the box, 8x6x4, weighs in at 8 ounces with 7.3. So I round it up to 8. And so these boxes are really good for still staying in first class weight but protecting items. Here's a hat that does not need a box. This is just like a bucket hat, fisherman's hat, whatever you want to call it. New Era Miami Dolphins. So since it does flatten out, it's no damage to that. I can fold it like this, put it in suffocation, and I'll put it in a 6x9 poly like I did the shirts. Alright, next up we'll do these women's Asics running shoes. These are so lightweight. If I put them on my scale, they weigh 12.8. 9 ounces so I can literally put these into a I believe my padded eBay envelope and it'll still be first class let me check it out shoes in a, in a plastic bag with the padded envelope comes out exactly 14 ounces so it can stay first class weight over one pound I still would have put used a padded um, envelope I just would have done with a padded flat rate envelope all right next we could do the Starbucks Bahamas coffee mug I'm just going to wrap it in some tissue paper to start, just to give it a little, you know, clean, neat appearance, you could say. Just going to wrap it in bubble wrap, bubble wrap, and then I'm going to put it into a, it should fit into a USPS 7x7x6 seven by seven by box. It is called the box number four. It's in there good. I put a bed of packing paper in the bottom and then I'm going to stuff all around the sides and the top. The key to fragile is not breaking is to not let it touch any of the four sides, actually six sides, all four sides, top and bottom, and then you know have it well protected with some bubble wrap or something and then pack it very snug so there is zero movement. All right, all done. This thing is nice and snug. There's zero movement in there. That mug is not breaking unless this box absolutely gets crushed. Next up, we got a men's Piccolino's. That is the brand. Let me see if that'll show up for you. So I'm gonna put these in a plastic bag and then um, USPS shoe box. And this is a USPS shoe box. For those of you that are unfamiliar with it, let me show you. If, hopefully that shows up clear. USPS shoe box, 14 by 7 and by 5. And this goes dimensional, so you put your weight and you put it 14.75 just under the 
USPS priority tab on your, on your drop downs. All right, next up is this pair of All Saints men's jeans. And when I do jeans, when you lay them flat, you get this curve at the bottom of the butt and the top of the crotch. So what I do to make it straighter, because you got the narrower leg, I fold this part in. Okay? Fold that in, then you fold your legs over on top of it. And it makes it narrower, and then I just do a three-fold. Or I call it three-fold, it's actually three sections, but it's two folds. One, two. And there you have how your jeans, put them in here, and now they will fit nicely right into a padded flat right envelope. And there we have it, a pair of jeans, perfectly into a padded flat rate. $7.52 if you're top rated. Is this Clear Sounds Big Button Telephone. This is for people that are visually impaired, I believe. I put this in a plastic bag, and um, we'll see what kind of box is going to work for this. I'm not sure yet. And if it was over two pounds, then I was thinking about a regional rate A box, right here. Which, if you put five pounds in this, a regional rate A box ships at two pound rate. So if it's five pounds, four pounds, six pounds, they charge you as if it only weighed two pounds. Regional, that word doesn't mean you can only send it in your region. It's a little confusing for people, but that's that. All right, and there's the phone wrapped in bubble wrap. It just fits on an angle, but that gives me a little bit of an angle room. Put the headset right in there. And it'll fold up good. Next up is this digital camera, Olympus. It's got the whole pack with the charging cable and all that stuff. So I'm going to put the camera separately in a plastic bag. You know, this is all in the Ziploc. I don't want it just floating around in there. Then I'll just wrap it in a little bubble wrap. All right, and finally last is this Callaway X driver. I'm just going to wrap the head in some bubble wrap and use the medium triangle box. But the driver is too long, so I'll have to cut, like, six inches eight inches what off another box and add it to it to extend it here we have it 12 items as i was finishing my packing one more sale came in it was just a pair of yoga pants so i'm not going to show it and the golf club in a tube with extension on it hi that was work so much more work when you're filming too. So you better appreciate it. No, I'm just kidding. So we're done, let's go hit the store. The first thing I noticed when I entered the store was the whole place was rearranged. So I went to the back, checked out that wall, a little bit of electronics, didn't really see anything at all. Kept looking, nothing. Then I went and looked at over at the ceramics and the glass and ended up, did find a couple of mugs, which you'll see later on wasn't like my goodwill they had only one card sitting out with barely anything in it so after that section looked around a little more headed back over to the shoes ended up finding some good shoes today and there was two others that i could have picked up but for what they were charging like eight or ten dollars there just wasn't enough meat on the bone to actually buy them and those are the pairs i'm looking at right here so I passed on those, but I did find some other ones. Then I went over to the men's polo shirts and I've always found the good polos at this place. And here right away, as I start looking, I pull out and it's a Peter Millar Summer Comfort. Now it does have an embroidery on the chest of a golf course or country club, but for me, that's okay. You know, if it's the name of a company, that could make it a tough sell, but a golf course isn't so bad. So I checked it out real quick. It looked decent, so I kept it and I kept on looking. Continued on through all the polos. I often will look at texture and color. Like I don't look at the heavy cotton ones, I like that silky shiny, like the polyester ones. Here's another good pull I found. Nike Dry Fit University of Tennessee. This thing was in mint condition. Continued on down the aisle. And here I found a Vineyard Vines polo, but it was like that 
that rough textured heavy cotton so that was a pass and usually vineyard vines I will pick up it was a pretty long aisle of polo shirts so I kept looking and sure enough here was another Peter Millard every time I've ever gone to this place I've always found Peter Millard's Then I went and looked at the men's shorts. As you'll see, I kind of look at the colored ones. Here's like a turquoise and like a salmon color. You know, I look for something different. You don't want plain. But I didn't find anything in there today. Check out the book section. I ended up finding one good book. And on the shelf next to it, I saw a bicycle seat. It was a Trek. And I have found a few good bike seats here in the past. This was only $3, but it was a very basic model and it had a hole, so I passed. Then I'll go and I'll find a nice bright spot under the lights or near a window, and I will inspect everything, all the buttons, no stains, no holes, no tears, and so on. And then I'll comp everything and make sure it's worth picking up. It's something you always want to do. All right, came away some good stuff in there, definitely. I might have to come to this place more often. Um, like I said, the clothing is so much better priced than my area, and I'm only 10 miles away. Like, typically like half price. A men's shirt here is like 4 four fifty, and the one right near my house is like $8. Doesn't make sense. But either way, I'm going to head home. I'm just going to do one store today, and we'll go through the hall, and I got some decent stuff. get everything unpacked and situated and we will go through the hall. First shirt up, Peter Millar, Summer Comfort. We just spoke about this in my live and I think in my last video. Size XXL. What's this color? Fuchsia? Is that what this is called? But even with things like this, if it has some kind of weird embroidery, like it has three trophies and um, or it has like initials or a monogram or a name of a country club, a lot of golfers don't mind that. Ew. Another Peter Millar, Summer Comfort, size XL. It's got like this tiny checked blue and like a maybe gray pattern. And this one says East Lake, East Lake Golf Course, GC. Yep. So again, I'm not minding that. For three, now this is a nice shirt. Nike Drive Fit, size XL, University of Tennessee, embroidered swoosh on the chest. Nice little pattern. It's got like kind of a mesh bottom. I don't know if that shows up. My camera focus. And a solid top. I'm going to say this is brand new, never worn, no tags. It is nice and crisp. All right, next polo is just a Augusta National Golf Shop tag, size XL, with the Masters flag. So this is a good polo. And again, this was $4. Number three is a t-shirt. I don't pick up too, too many t-shirts. because You never get great value on them. But this was new with tag, and it was Vans. In black, it's got vans and like a wing design, like a spider web above. And it's got, what is that, like the death skull from Mexico or whatever they call it? I don't even know. Size large, still got the tags. Grab this hat, FSU Seminoles. Still has the label on it, nice and clean. Hook on the top, so it was never worn. And um, I know a lot of people talk about and show when they sell vintage hats. But let me tell you something, I've been selling a lot of sports hats. And they've been selling quick. So I'm going to do a video pretty soon about hats that are selling for me. And they're not vintage ones. They're all kinds of sports teams, NCAA and professional. Item, this pair of women's sneakers, Brooks Launch 6 is the brand and style. And um, great condition. Minimal, minimal wear on the soles. Right, the next pair I got today, these New Balance. I don't know if it's called Vaze, V-A-Z-E-E, -E, model 2090. These are women's, excellent condition. They were $8, so these were a good find, they had good comps. I'll show you all the comps, you know, at the end. All right, here's the second pair of Brooks. Um, this place really came through with some good shoes today. These are called Pure Flow 7, and these are size 9. I believe these are women's, I'll have to look them up better to see. But these were... 
six dollars. I don't know if you can see it. Six and G for green for the label of the week, which is a total scam. Because by the time that color comes around to be 50% off, anything good is going already. Also got these, these Nikes. Nike React. These are a women's. A gray and like a teal blue. A little pink swoosh. These are size 8. Excellent condition. I mean, there's minimal, shoot, I don't even know. Barely worn. Nothing. So these were 10 because, of course, they're in good condition. Um, typically don't get too many mugs. You know, this is the ones I look for, the You Are Here's that had the different cities. This one's Toronto. And it says on the bottom, you always get that You Are Here. One dollar. That had good comps. And then this is a Starbucks Bahamas one. Got the conch shell. And both of these seem to be brand new. There's no stir marks. There's no nothing inside. All right. And one more item is the Serendipity Bible for Groups, 4th edition. This is a Bible. Um, excellent condition. Very clean. No writing. No names. No nothing. You can tell it's brand new. Listen. When you open the spine, you hear that crackling. That tells you it's new. And this was $2, and it sells for about, I think it was a comp for like $24. You know, well, I know a lot of people have seen a you know, big reseller or two on YouTube buy and sell Bibles. So everybody's like, Bibles, Bibles, Bibles. There's so much more to book section than just Bibles. I really don't pick up a Bible. There's only certain ones that sell for decent. But there's a lot of money in the book section. And if you're ever interested to see, at the, on my end screen for this video, I'm going to put the link to a video of my top selling books for last year. And you'll be amazed at what kind of money some books sell for. So go check out that video if you've not already seen it. Alright, so that's the haul. Now let's check out the comps. told you about. Everybody in the book selling community who sells on Amazon knows about this book. It's like one of the grails find that you can, you know, come across. It sells for serious money. So here's a screenshot of the book. It's called Margin of Safety. It's a business book. I don't even know exactly what it's about. It doesn't really matter. If you find it, you're going to make some serious bank. So here's the spine of it because that's what you'll see on the shelf. So you get a clear shot of that. Margin of Safety blue and white book. Now, here's a scroll of the recent solds on it. Now as you can see, they're all like in the $700 range. Now you're going to see a few that are a lot less that have like spirals on the edge. Those are like the, the binder ones. Forget those. You want the hardcover, margin of safety, all these ones that show as like seven, dollars $800 range. I remember a year ago there was some that was selling for like 1200 bucks. I think there's one in this scroll that shows that. So typically you could get books at a thrift store, you know, a dollar or two. And if you can find this book that sells for 700 bucks or more, psh, you know, that's a serious nice find. So keep an eye out for that book. Even if you don't sell books and you're in a thrift store, pass through the book section. They're usually organized nonfiction fiction. So you want to go to the nonfiction section and you want to go to the business part of it. And see if you see it. All right, so that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, hopefully you saw a nice brand to look out for. Found some good shirts today. Packed up a whole bunch of stuff. I don't even know if all of that's going to make it into this video. But either way, those are all Sunday sales. It was like $250 in sales. I didn't give you breakdowns. My buy cost I came out to be like $28 or $29 for everything that sold. 
So I'm looking at about 180, 190 in profit just from Sunday. So I love that. That's not really a common thing. You know, usually I do a lot less than that in the 100 range maybe for a day, but I'll take it. So, ooh, is that a sale? Hold on. No, it's my wife texting me. So either way, um, hopefully you've sold a good brand. Keep an eye out for that book. And if you do find that book, send me a message so I can give you my PayPal and collect my commission. See you in the next video.